Generating graphs packed with paths uh, is joined between Philip Varna and uh, Matthias Ho Anderson, and Matthias will give the talk. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. So the talk is divided into five sections. Uh, so first we're going to have some motivation about what we're trying to do and uh, some of the simple folklore about uh, linear cryptanalysis. Then we're going to rephrase linear cryptanalysis as a set of graph problems. And then we're going to look at some heuristics for finding good subgraphs and why this is of interest for SPNs. And then we're going to look at some plots and results and then uh, lastly some, some, some future work. So first some motivation. So since the, since the 90s, we have been knowing about uh, linear and differential distinguishers. And generally, when you, when you uh, suggest a new design, uh, one of the things that you have to argue about is, is provide some sort of argument against um, your resilience to linear and differential uh, cryptanalysis. And of course, what is, uh, what is of interest is to determine the optimal parameters of these distinguishers, uh, as well as the expected um, power of our distinguishers uh, over the key space. So in this, uh, in this presentation, we will uh, we'll primarily focus on linear crypt cryptanalysis, both because of the session and also because the differential case is largely analogous uh, for the work presented here. So uh, for, for an R round, uh, net, for an R round uh, cipher, uh, iterated cipher, uh, we have this notion of a, of a trail, which defines approximations over every round function. And the idea is that we can calculate the correlation of, uh, of the of the approximation over every round function efficiently because it decomposes into relatively small and simple uh, nonlinear components for which we can enumerate the uh, full domain. Uh, and then we have this notion of, uh, of a contra correlation contribution for, for a trail, uh, which is simply the product of the correlations over the approximations over all the rounds. And uh, then we can describe the, the correlation for an approximation between alpha and beta over the entire, over the entire cipher simply as the sum of correlation contributions over, over, over all the trails uh, under, under suitable assumptions. And then for, for key alternating ciphers, we, we generally assume that, that so if you, if that, that, the, that the analysis becomes, um, that the, if you consider the square, square correlation, um, then it becomes independent of the, of the key. It essentially, it becomes a sign. Uh, and uh, then we have this notion of an, of an ELP, which will, uh, which will be the expected um, correlation amplitude over for, for, for our distinguisher. Uh, and, and we can estimate, again, suitable assumptions. Uh, this is as the sum of the square correlations of, of trails. And then what, what happens in practice is that we, we sum over some smaller subset, calligraphic U. Um, uh, often, this calligraphic U is... Um, is, is merely a singleton, in which case you're assuming that there is a single dominant trail. So the idea is that we will we'll sum over the, the dominant terms. We will consider the dominant terms of the, of the summation, and, uh, and they will give us a good estimate for, for the entire sum. Um, but of course, the, the performance of a single trail and any uh, particular, any, even any small set of trails is not necessarily um, a good indication about your, your design's susceptibility to linear, to linear and differential cryptanalysis. And uh, this is the problem that we're trying to mitigate. And current, current uh, methods for, generally current methods for, for considering multiple trails of a whole uh, are linear in the number of trails. Uh, and then for, for designs which have a very large number of good trails, this is suboptimal. So we would like to get some sublinearity, which is the goal of this work. And uh, to get into this frame of mind, we are going to rephrase linear cryptanalysis as a graph problem. So the graph is going to be what we call a multi-stage graph. So in this case, we have a, we have a cipher of three rounds. And it's, um, it's a directed graph here going from left to right, but I omit the, HOs, uh, the arrows. And the vertices are our parodies for linear cryptanalysis and similar for differential. And the, uh, the edges then naturally become uh, the approximations over the round functions. Uh, and the length of the edge is the squared correlation of the approximation over the round function between the source and the destination of the edge. Then if we consider uh, with, this, with this notation, then if we consider the length multiplicatively, then the then paths through the graph become trails. And the length of a path uh, becomes the squared correlation contribution of, of the particular trail. <coughs> 
And uh, with this, we have we define the notion of a, of a weight of the graph between an alpha and a beta as the input and output uh, nodes. Uh, and this corresponds to the, the hull, which is the sum over, over the lengths of every path between alpha and beta. Uh, one, one, one observation here is, one very simple observation here is that you can calculate this um, in linear time over the number of edges, uh, basically using bottom-up uh, memorization. So you start by calculating the hull between any alpha and any u node, which is trivial in this case. And then we can calculate the hull between any alpha and any v node by at any v node calculating a weighted uh, sum of the holes between the alpha and the u nodes. Uh, and then we progress uh, similarly for the beta nodes, again calculating a weighted sum over the holes between the alpha nodes and the v nodes. Also note that we can, uh, we can calculate, we get for free the, the, the weight between alpha and any beta node. So we don't need to, to consider uh, any pair. But of course, this is all uh, nice and fine, but the problem here is that the, the graph is, is far too large, right? So if we naively define the graph as this, uh, sure, the, the algorithm runs in linear time, but the graph has exponential size. So what's the use? So the question is, can we find some, some suitable subgraphs that contain, in a sense, most of the good trails? And uh, of course, the, the observation here is that we are not looking for good trails, necessarily. We're looking um, at the more general problem of finding these good graphs, uh, i.e. we want the maximization of the weight between any alpha beta pair uh, to be large. And for this, we have devised some uh, heuristics. Uh, we have, uh, and in this case, we're going to be focusing primarily on SPNs, for which we have the, the best heuristics. So the overall, the overall uh, method uh, will be that we'll pick some sort of disjoint families of edges, which we'll describe. Uh, then we'll prune the families using uh, an approximation of the, of the graph defined by these edges. And then finally, we will expand these families to, 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 to a full graph. And then at the end, we'll do some cleanup work on the graph. Oh, shit. So one immediate and easy observation is that if we have any edge of length zero, we can just remove it. Uh, this corresponds to a, a trail with length zero and it doesn't contribute to the whole. And then once we've removed it, we can, um, we can remove any, any vertex that doesn't have a predecessor or successor because no path can traverse it. Uh, but this still doesn't get us far enough. So now describing the, 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 these families of edges. So this is probably best described by giving an, ex an example. So consider a 16-bit SPN, a small toy cipher with four identical S-boxes. Then if we, uh, where we have the following two approximations over, over the S-box uh, with the following square correlation, so three goes to, to D with correlation two to the minus two and uh, seven goes to the four with the square correlation two to the minus two. Then if we have the, the S-box pattern, which we call it, this will be a family, one of, one of the families, uh, S1 to 1.2 to the minus two, 1.2 to the minus two, this corresponds to every approximation over the S-boxes, which have this particular pattern of uh, squared correlations. So in particular, the first and the third S-box must be inactive. And the, um, the second and the last S-box is basically any combination of the approximations above. And then we also naturally have, we also have the projection onto the first and the second coordinate, which corresponds to the input pair on the set of all input parities and set of all output parities uh, for, for, the, for the family. Okay, then if we have some, some set of families, so we have some set of S-box patterns, then we can consider the, the graph defined by, by the set in, in a natural way by simply just expanding every member of the set. Uh, at this, these forms are edges, and then our vertices is just uh, the union of the projections. So if, let the, so suppose we have some, some set of, of S-box patterns defining this subgraph that is of our interest, then we can immediately observe that for any intermediate stage uh, in the graph, so any node that is not an input and an output node, if, um, if V does not lie in the, in the set of both, if V does not lie both in the set of input and output parities of the expansion of all families, 
then it's, it's immediately pruned because it can't have a predecessor or a successor. Uh, our problem now is that, so we've defined these families. We can keep the description of the families in memory, but the expansion uh, we, we cannot possibly keep in memory. Uh, so the idea will be that can we, can we somehow prune on these families before expanding them so that we have less families to expand and we can manage the graph. And the overall approach and the more details in the paper is that we generate an approximation of the graph by applying a compression function uh, very, very like uh, differential, um, uh, truncated differentials in, in such a way that if there is a, uh, an edge in the original graph and hence a path, uh, between two nodes in the original graph, then there is also an edge in the truncated graph, but not necessarily uh, the converse. And then, then our, our algorithm is basically like iteratively refining the compression until you reach the, the, the trivial case. So we start by generating some, some set of patterns using a, a heuristic. Uh, we have a generic heuristic, but if you have some cipher uh, specific knowledge, you, you, could, you, could, you could apply this. And then we pick a compression factor. Then we generate this truncated graph by applying the compression uh, on every vertex uh, when we expand the, the members of the, of the set uh, and then prune the, on the truncated graph. Then we remove any, any family, any S-box uh, set, any S-box pattern uh, for which all members of the expanded S-box pattern uh, are not in the truncated graph because if, if, it, if a member is not in the truncated graph, it cannot be in the full graph either. Uh, the truncated graph is sort of strictly more connected. Um, and then uh, we refine the compression uh, until we get to the trivial case. And then we expand the graph, okay? Uh, notice here that in a sense this, 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 um, this procedure is, is lossless, right? So you're not, you're not removing something that could otherwise have uh, created additional uh, additional paths. Like once you've fixed your, your set of patterns, uh, the graph that you will get out in the end will have the same will have the, the same set of paths through the through the cipher. So uh, suppose we have this following graph at the end. Then um, we have we we observe the problem, and this is basically that if we apply now pruning to the intermediate rounds after at the end after expansion then we will lose a large part of our search base. And the, the way that we heuristically avoid this for, for SPNs is that we add some, some vertices that are not in the set of, um, of the expanded families that are optimal for, for the vertices that would otherwise be pruned. So the input and output vertices, okay, we can do this here and here, here and here that would otherwise be pruned, then we add optimal uh, input and output vertices to ensure that they're not. Okay, then we can um, take a look at some plots and results. So we've implemented uh, this, this heuristic in a, in a publicly available tool that we call Cryptograph. And uh, for SPNs, it's, it's very simple to use. It's essentially fine and forget. You, you give it a linear layer, you give it a uh, nonlinear layer, and it, it, it can start giving you analysis. So, uh, of course, one thing you can do uh, once you've, you've, you've found this crop graph is that you can, you can plot it at least for small parameters uh, so that you, you can actually look at it with your eyes. Um, and we hope that this will be of use to, to cipher designers who can then visualize how the, the hall looks. So here's a, here's a, pre here's a plot for present. So uh, you immediately see basically the Okuma observation that you have this, uh, this huge amount of trails because you have this level of, of, of freedom in your choice of approximations over the, over the round functions. Um, in contrast, here's a, here's a plot for GIFT, which, has this, uh, which is essentially uh, a present-like cipher with, uh, with this specially crafted bogey permutation that is designed to, to avoid uh, exactly this observation that is found in Okuma, um, uh, that you have this uh, very large number of uh, Hemingway one trails that are all roughly equally good, right? So in particular for, for percent, you cannot you cannot really upper bound, you cannot simply upper bound the squared correlation of any particular trail and take that as indicative of your cipher susceptibility to linear cryptanalysis because there is this very strong Hall effect. So we have applied the the technique to 17 different ciphers for both uh, linear and differential cryptanalysis. 
And I want to highlight the, the following results. So uh, we have uh, four, four Preston-like designs. And for the Preston-like designs, we generally find a, a very, very large number of, of trails. So just as, a, as an extreme example for, for Puffin, we find actually the, the, the hall that we end up considering between our approximations contains two to the 112 trails. Um, and then for Preston-like designs, we, we, we generally see about two to the 60, right? So for Preston, uh, we also see two, two to the 60, which is also not feasible to do if you would have to in linearly um, enumerate them in linear time. Um, so we, we improved the, the analysis of, of Preston by essentially considering a vast number of trails uh, at really no additional time. And then for rectangle, we also improved the hull analysis that is found, found in that work in the original design work by considering a few hundred thousand trails. And lastly, some, some points of future work. So we would like to add support for ARX ciphers. We, we need some good heuristics for ARX ciphers. Uh, the current heuristics obviously don't, don't, don't port. Um, and it's not immediately obvious how to do this. And we would also like to have some better heuristics for fast networks. We do have support for fast networks, but we would like to have some, some, some less generic heuristics. Um, yes, that's the end of my talk. Question for Matthias. Thanks for the talk. Uh, you said that for the tool you intended to be uh, helpful for designers, so um, if I am now designing a new SPN yes. uh, cipher, what uh, do I have to do to apply this tool to my new design? So uh, for, for SPNs it's really, really simple. Uh, you can supply the, you simply supply the S-boxes, so you can have different S-boxes in the same round, but we don't currently, only for technical reasons, don't support it. different S-boxes in different rounds. But you give, uh, you give it the S-boxes, you give it the linear layer, you implement this in, in, in a Rust function, and then, um, then even if you, if, you give, if you also give us the, 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 the key schedule, we can also generate an approximation of the correlation distribution over the, over the key space. Uh, because this, this method also gives uh, easily rise to, uh, to a way to quickly enumerate the correlation over the, over the key space. You basically just reweight the graph according to the particular expanded key that, that you get from running the key schedule. So for, for SPNs, it's really simple to apply. OK, nice. Thanks. For him. So does your tools also support uh, partial S-box layers, like low MC? Uh, I think we do. I, I'm not particularly, I'm not super sure about that, actually. OK. Uh, let me see. I don't, I, the question is whether we've added that subsequently to this, because we've kept, kept working on the tool. I also have a question, so yes. uh, maybe I missed that, that part, but uh, do you have a bound of the uh, results and uh, the actual situation? Could you, uh, could you rephrase yeah. the question? So, do you have a bound between the result you find and the actual uh, situation? So, or, so, or is that error? Um, yeah. so, so the results that we find, right? So if you give me these S-box families, mm. then I will consider every trail that lies in this expansion. So if you, can, if you, if you give me, say, all the, Heming, the Hemingway 1 approximations over the... Over the, 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 the um, all the Hemingway one uh, parodies over the over the S box, say for present, then I can give you the result for the whole over every trail that that lies in this, right? So in a sense, it's it's more it's more robust. It's, it's right? see. so so the heuristic step is choosing this this calligraphic P set of, of patterns. I don't know if, if this is uh, if did I answer your question? Yep. Okay. Any more question? If no, let's thank Matthias and all other speakers in the session. <laughs>